Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, Rado's gonna learn how to play the sixth round. And how am I gonna do that? With the help of my good friend, Alex! Alex is back, everybody! <laughs> oh, I am so happy Alex is here. In case you've never seen him on the channel before, Alex is, amongst other things, a professional board game teacher. He literally gets paid to do that at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. He's also a professional shoe designer, which is like a whole other thing that is fascinating. But anyway, we will not go into that today because today we are going to be playing Sixth Realm, which takes up my entire table. And what we're going to do in this video is Alex is going to teach me how to play it. And uh, that means he's also going to be teaching you so you'll have a good idea of how it goes. Uh, so if you just want to jump right to the gameplay, folks, there's links for it down in the show notes. But otherwise... Alex, take it away. Where are we? Who are we? What's going on? What is the Sixth Realm? Well, the Sixth Realm comes in the Five Realm series from okay. this publisher, and we, we have effectively discovered a Sixth Realm. Okay. That's the name, right? All right? And in this game, you are going to be sort of patronizing these different guilds in this area to try to gain the Queen's favor mm -hmm. and become the... the the best patron of the sixth realm. As okay. It were. So there's a lot of different. Is this moving the capital parts. of the sixth realm? Yeah, this is the capital. This is the castle. This is the queen's castle. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. Right. So we are, we are going to be placing. We're going to be taking these different actions. We are going to be placing our counselors so that we are sort of you know influencing the politics of the island as it were. Gotcha. And uh, also affecting all the different guilds so that we can score the most points and win the game. As one does. As one does. All right. So. The, the best place to start, I think, will be kind of down here in the bottom area. So, okay. like I mentioned before, this is the Queen's Castle. The Queen's Castle is where we're going to score all of our points on the scoring track here. Right. Which, by the way, folks, my apologies. This is a big old board. Um, this is the score track, apparently. Yes. And if somebody makes it to um, four or five points, you're not going to see them for a little while. But then they'll work their way back up once you get up to, like, 15 or 16 points. Yeah. And we start getting back there again. So, I think that's really... We, we've cut off some of the victory point track. We've cut off um, th these continue around here. There's a few more, whatever these spots are. Mm -hmm. But it's a big board. Yes. Uh, my table is not big enough. But anyway, yes. So here we are at the Queen's Castle. Yes. So at the Queen's Castle, there's a couple things to pay attention to. You see the, the Queen's Court is kind of in the middle here. Okay. Right, n right there. That is going to be where we are going to place our end game objectives. Ah, that's what okay. these are. So, yes, we've got some feet tiles in our hand. In a two-player game, they're shaped like diamonds because they have two objectives on them. Okay. In a multiplayer game, they are just triangles, so you are just affecting oh, one more space spaces on the board. Yes, okay. exactly. I see. So, we, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that at the end, but that's going to be where you're going to score the most points. Okay. okay. That's going to be your bread and butter. It's going to give you objectives that you're going to want to complete within your right. player board. Based on these board. that I got handed, dealt out to me. Exactly. Randomly. So you've got five. I've got five. We'll be placing them on the board. Gotcha. Every round, basically. Okay. Okay. Up here as well is a track. This is the Queen's Ambition track. That will sort of control a few different things, but uh, it... If you make it pat or you make it to this threshold, that's when you are allowed to place your feet tile. And then if you make it to the end, if you were to go past the end, you get one victory point for every time you go past the end. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll be paying attention to that. There's also some other things with the council track that we will we'll mention with that. But like I said, there's a lot of things going on in this game, so we'll just take it one thing <laughs> at a time. Okay. Yeah. So down here is the council track, and this is important because this is going to be the main area that is going to determine our actions for the round okay okay, okay. so in the game we're going to be playing over three years each year's can each year consists of seven rounds so the dial will move to each of the six guilds on the on the track here this dial, this dial. and then once it gets to the last sixth turn right which will be here then whoever is first on the queen's ambition track gets to pick the direction of the dial for the final action of the round so okay. the seventh action of the round. I'm, I'm picking one of these. <laughs> yes, you get to pick one point, of the six. Yeah, and get to point in and that And what direction. are these six things? Are these so facets these, of society or something? Yes, these six things represent the guilds. Well, you know what? We're going to have to hold on a second, folks. i got to pause because I've got a phone call. And you know what? It's potential spam. Ah, boo. So we're going to swipe down on that. All righty. Please continue. All right. How rude. <laughs> 
How, don't they know? Don't they know? <laughs> I know. I'm trying to teach this game. Jeez. It's okay. Someone being on their phone while I'm teaching a game is nothing new to me. Okay, <laughs> I promise you that happens all the time. <laughs> Anyways, right, so, so the yeah. once uh, once we get to the seventh action, like I mentioned, whoever's first in the queen's ambition gets to choose the you direction of the Boom, dial. Man. Right? They can say, "Oh, I want to take that action." Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then once that seventh action is done, there's a couple of things that resolve, but essentially the year is over and we will kind of reset. A yeah. Few okay. Okay. How many years? So it is played over three years. Three years. Okay. Yeah. So this dial, as you can see here, it, it's not just pointing in one direction. There's a couple of prongs yes, that come off are. the side, right? And so where the main dial is pointing, that is the primary action for the round. Okay. But if you want to, you can also take one. You not also. You can take one of the adjacent mm -hmm. actions instead. If you spend a resource token. Okay. Okay. So we each have three resource tokens to begin. You can get a maximum of six resource tokens, aka two of each type. Uh huh. And in this case, you can expend any resource I token. Say, these are your starting resources. Yes. These right are here. yes. Right. We each start with one. Each of them is represents two areas on the guild track. So this is brown and purple, this one is green and gray, this one is red and blue. Right. So okay. if we're here and hey, I should be doing pitchfork torchy stuff, sure. but I want to do a blue, exactly. I could spend this. Exactly. So, so I'd spend my blue or my green to take either on the left. And I could only do the main one or the one on the left or the right, right? Um, you can spend a resource to take an action that is adjacent to the primary action it's okay. instead gotcha, of gotcha, the main gotcha. action. Okay? okay. And at the beginning of the game, you probably you know you're 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 weighing your resource. You only have three resources, but as you gain more resources, it may be a more valuable thing for you if you're trying to go up on a specific track. Okay. okay? So that is kind of where the actions are selected. Now, the other things to pay attention to is the first player token. It starts with whoever is uh, has a higher number on the setup tile. So yes. the setup tiles I'm we set drew at two. the beginning of the game. It gives us some things on the supply. You are two. I am six. So I get to keep. I get to start with the first player token. Okay. But every time your counselor mm -hmm. is in charge of a specific guild, yeah. then you get to take the the starting token, and you get to keep that starting token until. Someone else is the counselor of that okay. area. All right. Okay, so these and, things they represent the action you do. Are they also the guilds? They are also the guilds right. that are on the board, which okay. I will explain. Okay. We'll do it in order gotcha, so gotcha, that gotcha. we we can kind of. And remember. these, by the way, in case you can't tell, folks, these clearly were randomly placed out. Yes, so, they, they are okay. randomly assigned at the beginning of the game. All right. Now, your counselors, they come from your board, and uh, again, they will uh, determine your influence. But when you place counselors, you can also bump counselors into non-active slots so you retire oh. the counselors okay it gives the person one point so i could bump you uh -huh. or i could bump myself to give myself one point okay um, and then it makes you the lead counselor of that guild for uh, okay. the time being right, right. And so you anytime you see a little chair action there that's when you're going to be placing a counselor on the board okay so the council track will come back to this in a bit because that is kind of like a special action that you can take right. but we'll, we will go now to explain each of the six guilds on the board let's talk about the guilds. okay so this first one the red guild this one's pretty straightforward this is the adventurers guild so the adventurers guild is up here you have a torch that starts in the zero space here on the board. Hence the torch exactly. on the red guild. Okay. And when you take, when you use action points here, you just spend one action point to move one space. Okay. okay. So this one's pretty straightforward. You just go through the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And every time you go into a space, you collect the thing that is in that space. So okay. in this case, you'll collect ink. Ink is a resource that you use on scrolls, which I'll explain later. Okay. This lets you remove ink, scrolls. Once they have ink on them, they cannot be used again until you remove the ink from those scrolls. It'll okay. go into the supply, not back into your supply. So keep that in mind. But this allows you to be able to reuse your scrolls mm -hmm. in the future. This one you get to choose and so on and so forth. As you go around the track, there are multiple things that happen. There is one interesting, there's a couple interesting things that and are happening. And there's also branching paths. Exactly, well. right. Okay. So once you get to four, you get to choose which direction you go. These two actions, this is you can choose one of these artifacts from okay. this, which are basically end game scoring conditions okay. based on things that you have on your board. So if you have the most brown envoys on your board, then you get two victory points at the end of the game, et cetera, right. et cetera. Okay. So another way to, you know, bump up your scoring that you're going to have in your queen's court there. All right. And this is just draw three from the bag and pick one. Okay. Okay. So you get to choose some paths and there's a couple of different decisions. There's also some scrolls on here. If you use a scroll on there, you'll still take an ink from your supply, but you have to place it on one of these three spaces. The game. So these three spaces represent these six guilds. Yeah. And so if you wanted to move your rank up on these six guilds, then you'll say, oh, I want to move my rank up on brown. I'll place it here and then move my rank up on brown. This is a good opportunity now to shift over to your player board to talk a little Let's bit about rank and reputation. do that. Okay. Do 
So, your board here, you've got this six oh, columns. Oh, no! Oh, no, you knocked over. It's a over. disaster. I knocked over some people. Because there's a bunch of them. Yes, there's a lot of lot of stuff on the board here. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go to your board instead? Okay, sure. Um, there we go. Yeah, so here's the board. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but... Right now, we're going to be talking about rank and reputation, which is in these six columns. So okay. these six columns, they represent the six guilds, right? And so at the beginning of the game, your rank is at the bottom level. And your reputation, which which are these uh, little arrows, is mm -hmm. also at the bottom level. Okay. And this determines how many action points you can use for each guild. Okay? So okay. for right now, in the red guild, I can only use one action point, which means I can only move one space, right. which is not so good. Right. However, if at any point I take an action to to increase my reputation, that increases the amount of action points that I can take. Okay. So I increase it one space, I get three action points. Mm -hmm. Now, when you increase your reputation, that's temporary. It's just for one turn, and then that goes right back down. Yep. But if you are able to increase your reputation, or your rank, excuse me, then you will be able to ultimately increase your action points for right. the rest of the game. Yeah. Right. Now, this rip, uh, this rank can only go up two spaces, so the maximum okay. or the minimum thing you can get is five mm -hmm. there, but... Uh, I will explain how we do that. In five action room. points. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Five action points. The maximum you can get is eight. And then if you flip a book here, you can get an extra action point. We'll cover that in a second Which, by well. the way, was one of the things. As part of starting, I did start with uh, my gray book. So exactly. I've got plus one gray action. Yes, and I have plus one in the blue action. Okay. So we'll, we'll cover that when we get there. But uh, we'll mark our action points at the beginning of yeah. the round and stuff, stuff like that. But you generally want to have plenty of action points in, in each category so that you can do better actions. Indeed. Because the more action points you have, the better actions you can take. Okay? okay. So that is just something to note. All right. Now, um, that is how we keep track of how much we get to do of the six guild actions. Exactly. So it's definitely a puzzle of, do I move my reputation? Do I try to get my rank up so that my reputation is more valuable? Et mm -hmm. cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you'll see these bonuses throughout. So anytime you see this little sort of triangle with an arrow up, that means that you get to move, move up your reputation. And gotcha. then anytime you see a bracket, which I believe is only on the books, uh, then then you will oh, you move see. your rank up. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Yeah. Bra so whenever you would flip a book that has already been flipped, you move the rank up instead. Gotcha. Okay, so okay. that's that's the main way to get, get those actions. Okay. So back to the Adventurers Guild. You move as many spaces as you want on the uh, as you have action points, right? Mm -hmm. And you when you stop. There's a little number that's in the bottom, yes. which means that if that is where you end at the end of the year, you will reset back to that space. So if you were here, you'll go back to space number one. If you were deeper in the dungeon, you go back okay. to space number two, okay. Okay. right? You can even go back to space number three right. here. Okay. And at the end of the round, when you get reset to that space, you get whatever's on that space and whatever's behind that space. Okay. So if you get deep into the dungeon, you reset to three, you get to take all three of these actions. Oh, I see. For free at the end of the round. While I'm moving forward, if I have a lot of action points and make mm -hmm. it big, I assume I only activate where I land or do I activate everything as I go? You you activate one at a time. Oh, so okay. So if I move three, I would do that and then that exactly. and then that. Exactly. And then at the end of the round, I'd come back to say here, which means I'd get to do both of these. Exactly. If I, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they stack. Gotcha. For sure. And the further you get, the better the bonuses are, obviously, gotcha, gotcha, as you gotcha. can imagine. Okay. So, generally, that's the Adventurer's Guild. This is basically one of the only places to get these artifact mm -hmm. tiles, so, okay. which are nice to have at the end of the game. Sure. Okay. So, that is the Adventurer's Guild in the red. Next red up, action, which is our preferred first action, for the although first... we're not required to if exactly. we want to spend. Exactly. Okay. So, next action is the Merchant. The Merchant is this right one? here, the Merchant's Guild. Right. Okay, so the Merchant's Guild has this little wagon that starts out in the center, which means that you can move it to any of the six locations on the edge. But after it has been moved to a location, whenever you, you do an action there, you have to move it either counterclockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. okay. When you do, if you would take multiple actions there, you have to move it in that same direction one space each time you take an action. And okay, so again, if I have three, what what color are we talking about now? So this is green. This is the if green. If you had, so you had actions, or, yeah. six action points in sure, green, let's right? See. Then you would be able to take all three of these actions. Okay. You know, because that costs three, yeah, that, that costs cost, two, that costs one. Or exactly. I could do this one six times. You could do that one six times. Okay. But you would have to move in the same direction. So for example, you could refresh a green. Uh, or a refresh a brown resource. Okay. And then you could flip a book in red, and then you could 
gain a green resource if you would like. Oh, right? so these are actions I'm doing to these particular guilds. Yes, so the placement okay. actually does matter quite quite right. a lot, right? Yeah, okay. And you, gotcha, you gotcha, have gotcha. to be clever about how you do it because you have to move one space in that same direction mm -hmm. every time you take mm -hmm. an action. Mm -hmm. there, okay? Mm -hmm. But, like I said, there are three actions that you can take in here. You can refresh a resource of that guild type. Right. You can uh, flip a book and of that guild And in this case, this is, this is a blue or a red. Yes, can correct. Refresh. Okay. Right. So if this was here or if this was here, you'd be able to okay. refresh gotcha. that resource, which refreshing a resource is nice, and I'll explain. Using resources is always a good thing to be able to do. Then uh, this one allows you to flip a book. Again, you flip the book the first time, you get an extra action point in that guild. If you flip it the second time, you get to bump up your rank. Right, that's upgrading these things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Cool. And then the last thing is gaining a new resource. We can each get two resources of each type, so for a maximum of six resources. Okay. And... When we, you will just take it from the supply and put it in. It comes in refreshed, so okay. we, we have an unexhausted resource available to us right, basically I, as soon as we, we take that. The other side. Yeah, is exhausted. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Cool. And there's only these six? To uh, yeah, yeah. We can only, you can only have two of each type anyway, so we only Oh, need to, okay, so there's how many there are yeah, for a total, two player yeah, game. Exactly. Gotcha. Uh, there are obviously more for a multiplayer yes. game. Yes. Okay, so... That is the Merchant's Guild. Essentially, when it's once it's on the track, you have to be moving it from the, the place that it's yes. at. But that, that's pretty much everything that, that happens in the Merchant's Guild. Oh, actually, one more thing to say about the Merchant's Guild. Although, first of all, can I just say how amazing it is that Alex is just rattling all this off the top of his head with no script at all. I'm absolutely blown away. But, because of that, maybe there's going to be a couple of little things that uh, warrant a quick addition. Here's the first one. After a round where Merchant was the primary action and everybody's done with it, the cart is going to move back to the center of the Merchant area. So that the next time we Merchant, uh, the first player is going to be able to pick whichever color they want right from the get-go. Okay, let's continue. But there's some boat and stuff. Yes, this this is slightly different. This well, is, it, you know, a, a guild of its own. Which, oh, okay, all right, then we'll which, come back yes, to that one. we will... All right. Uh, Yes, we'll cross that bridge. It's an associated guild. We'll cross Merchant that bridge. Gotcha. Right. All right. Yeah. Then okay. Are we talking about purple next? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are talking about purple. So purple is up here. This is the Historian's Guild. You see there's uh, a couple of these translator meeples that are on these there. Are all... Those guys with the little oh, monocle. They're cute. Look at very, them. They're very adorable. nice. And so in this space, we can spend one action point to move a translator one space okay. in a straight line. Okay. So these ones can only go vertically. These ones can only go horizontally. Space, right? space, space. Exactly. So if I moved them here, I would gain popularity, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. If I moved this guy to one side, I'd be able to remove an ink, gain an ink, etc. Okay. So moving them is important to gain a resource, but also it allows there to be adjacency because the second action that you can take in here is to gain one of these traditions. So these traditions, this tradition is not available because oh, there's the way, not. The, a... These are the actions, right? Yes, one correct. action point to move a translator yep. or X action point to gain a tradition okay. so so this act this tradition is not available because there's no translator next to it okay so there needs to be a translator adjacent to it that's one of the reasons why you would want to move it okay but when you gain a tradition you will take it and you'll place it on one of the six slots at the bottom of your board okay oh. so the six slots at the bottom of your board each have different associate or different action points associated with them which will determine how many action points you have to spend for it, right? Okay. So these two up here, these are four action points. These are three. These are two. But the bonuses are are bigger, right. obviously, the, the further you so go. So when you get one of these, when you write down a tradition, mm -hmm. you put it in these spots, pay yep. the action points, get that benefit, presumably. That's right. And then you will be able to use this bonus at some point throughout the game. So there's a couple of different things that you can get here. You can get scrolls, which scrolls are what you use ink on. Okay. And you can use an ink to basically activate that scroll. Okay. Right? So this is a refreshable action because we can, like we said before, we can remove ink from mm -hmm. scroll. So mm -hmm. once you've used it, you could use it again. Okay? So that okay. is a multi-use action potentially throughout the game. There are some, this one allows you to refresh a certain type of resource, which is nice. Uh, and then there's some that will just gain you some popularity. So this one says you get one popularity plus one for every gray seal that you have. Okay, mm. so you'll also notice that both of these actually that are on the green screen here have gray seals associated with them. Yes, they do. They're in the corner, right? Oh, coincidentally. Yeah, yes, so them. those seals basically play into those objectives and they will also play into a few other things that we'll, we'll talk about in a okay. bit. Okay. 
Okay, so so gaining those, you can do those actions multiple times as long as you're removing the ink in between. Okay, mm -hmm. the other ones that don't have a scroll on them, those ones are basically action spaces. So these ones say you can place an envoy on this space and you can get the bonus of that space. So in the in the one with the blue seal, that one says that you can place an envoy there to flip a book of the envoy color that you place on sure, there. Sure, sure, sure. Which, we'll, again, we'll talk about that in a second. Upgrade, um, yeah. And then these are guild These are guild tokens, which these little, these little chits oh, that we have oh, by yeah, our so board, yeah, we've got they're our basically hand. ongoing bonuses that we will get when whenever we take that action as the primary action. Right? But again, this all is determined on the color of the envoy that you use to complete this. Right. What's an envoy? Envoys are these. Hey! Yeah, so that. let's let's take a break to talk about envoys because I've been throwing that word out there a lot. You do right? keep talking about envoys. I do keep talking about envoys. So the envoys over here, these are people that we want to bring into the kingdom. These are people that we're basically marketing to. To, <laughs> to, to, to say, hey, come on, come and check out the sixth realm. Okay, and, and we have six envoys on the ship. And in order to get them to get off of the ship and onto our player board, into our kingdom, right, mm -hmm. we need to increase the, our popularity. Okay. We need to be cool. They want to hang out with us, right? So the popularity track is right here. We start on zero. Okay. We're not very popular. No. We just got here. Okay. Yeah. But anytime you see this little star icon on the board or the star icons on your player board or something like yep, that, yep, yep. that is increasing your personal popularity. Okay. Which is, so there's the star. Yes, yeah. exactly. So you will be moving up on this popularity track. And as soon as you hit the, the marker, which is currently at three, that's the threshold, then... Your marker goes back down to zero. Okay. And you get to wow, take an envoy. Wow, there's a lot of that. Yeah, you made so much progress and then crashed <laughs> yes. back down. Okay. And you will get to take an envoy of your choice. Okay. Okay? When you take an envoy, they go into your arrival spaces, which are up here at the top of your board. All right. Yes, they are. Yep. And when you, when you place it, the first one doesn't do anything, but the second one that you place may give you some sort of bonus. So if, if you place them in a column here, okay. if they match, you can refresh a resource of that color so if i put two purple here i would be able to refresh this one if it was exhausted what tells you that it, there's a little there's oh a that's little, this symbol yeah, here yeah it's so saying two people if they're equal or if they have the same color then you can refresh okay an icon or an, a resource of that color. Uh, yeah that's the symbol if they them. are not the same color so for example if i had these two right then, then you just get equal. a queen's queen's ambition right okay which you just move up once on that track yep, which yep. is also pretty good mm -hmm. okay okay so there's a little bit of a staging area here mm -hmm. and then Basically, as a free action, you can move those envoys onto other action spaces on your board. Okay. okay. Oh, and actually, one more thing before we continue on that Alex should have mentioned. If you've got a pair of envoys in the staging area and you move one of them to a revealed action space on your board, the other one has to move as well. It can't stay behind to make a new pairing later on. They don't have to go to the same area. One could go to the courtyard and another one could go to a housing area, but both of them in a pair have to leave the staging area at the same time. Right. Uh... They'd get lonely otherwise. So lots of things that we're going to be talking about yes, in a second. Okay? Lots to talk about. It's okay. We got we got through there. We talked about envoys. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the scribe, which is actually the easiest guild of all the guilds. Okay. Okay. So the scribe is so easy. It's only got one little one little row here. Okay. Oh, this yeah. is the whole thing. That's the whole thing. All right. Okay. So in the scribe's guild, when you take that primary action, you spend one action point to either gain an ink. Or remove an ink. Right. Okay. And you can spend that as many scroll. times as you want, as many times as you have action points, right? Or later on in the game, when you have a bunch of scrolls, you can spend three action points to remove all of the ink from all of your scrolls. Gotcha. Right. So only really valuable towards the end when you have multiple scrolls to work with, but it's you know, it's a trade off. Gotcha. Right? Those are the only actions that you can take in that guild, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a setup guild. So you want to have exhausted your scrolls before you get there, so that you can then refresh them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. 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 Okay. Next up is the Builder's Guild. Builder's Guild is over there. Great. It's that little polyomino puzzle right here. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. So if you didn't think this was enough already, we've got polyominoes now. Yes, we do. So in this, in the Builder's Guild, you will spend two, three, or four action points to place the small, medium, or large tile onto the board. There are obviously some placement restrictions. So there's some spaces on here that cannot be covered by the single Okay. Right? So there there are some spaces that can only be covered by the single, some spaces that cannot be. This one can cover multiple areas across okay. uh, across the board there, but you you have to place it in a legal location. And when you place a tile, you get to take one of your houses off legal? your board. 
This is yes, that is yeah. legal. So you can't like partially cover exactly. You have That's to fully cover whatever spaces right. you want. That would are not be cool. That would this not be. would be exactly. cool. That would be cool. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Oh, and folks, a uh, one quick thing that Alex forgot to mention is when you are laying down your new foundation tiles, they have to either come in from the outskirts of the grid or extend from an existing tile that has already been placed. You can't just put them willy nilly anywhere you want. And then after you've done that, you can pay your extra action points to actually put a house on top and Alex will explain that now and whenever you place a tile you will also place a house on that tile I have a little house. you have any action points left at the end of that action of the two three four exactly if you have any action points left you can spend one or two of them to take the horizontal or vertical bonus of the row and column that you are you have placed your house on so yeah, you place if I place that and I place this house here mm -hmm. I can spend one action point to do either of these actions or I can spend two action points to do both in this case, I would gain if I spent two action points, I would gain a Queen's Ambition, move one on the track yep. there, and I would be able to increase the reputation of my green guild. Right. There's okay, the merchant's sure guild. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Which goes on my board, and that remains until I take that action, right? And so you can kind of stack that in other turns to make that action more powerful later in the game. Because and after it's done, again, it will crash down to where my exactly. the bracket was. Exactly. Right. Okay. Cool. So that is essentially there. And you don't have to, if you don't have any action points left, you don't have to gain that bonus. That's just sure. uh, a nice thing yeah, yeah. to be able to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but that brings up a, an interesting point. If at any point you do not want to spend the action points or you don't, don't have enough action points to do the things that you want or right. whatever, you've got extra action points yeah, yeah, yeah. waiting over. You can always, regardless of the guild that you're on, you can always spend one action point to move up on the council track, which okay. is down here, right? right? And this will basically just give you ongoing bonuses as mm -hmm. you go, right? So you can get Queen's Ambition, you can get a new council person from yeah. your board, and you can also get popularity yeah, from popularity. here, which is sometimes right. that's the best move to do, is to uh, you know, take a lesser action. And I know it goes track. off the bottom of the board book, but it's just more of the same, getting the popularity, getting more of your um, counselors, <laughs> etc. Exactly. Cool. All right. So that's the Builder's Guild. The last one is the Navigator's Guild. This one is at the very top of the board here. This one, you will be placing bridges and you will be placing towers. Okay. So you've okay. got bridges and towers here in this bottom area of your player board. Yeah. And so you can place up to three bridges and then you can spend two action points per tower. Okay. Okay. And I and assume that's, it probably says that yeah, right that's here. That's detailed right there. Yeah. Yep. Two action points for a tower, one, two, or three for one, two, or three. Okay. Exactly. All so right. the bridges are important because they, they give you one time bonuses, right? So you put them on a space. If I put it right there, I will gain a queen's yeah. uh, ambition. Okay. Uh -huh. If I put it right there, I can increase the reputation of my green. Oh, uh, right? okay. So they don't, they just have to be connected to a city. You can't place it in the middle. Okay. Some place, right? Because the bridge has to be sure. connected to sure, something. Sure, sure. But you know, you know, once this has been built, then you can. You know. Okay. And it doesn't have to be built by you either. You, if if I built one here, then and you can build it, one there. Something being here doesn't mean this is required. You can go anywhere just yeah. as long as it's not jumping into the middle of a. Okay. Exactly. It has okay. to be connected to either a city or another bridge. All right. Right. And then, well, uh, you, you get the bonus of of however many bridges you place, yes. right? Wherever. One, whatever. two, or three, depending exactly. on. Yeah. And then the the placing a tower, a tower has to be placed next to a completed route okay so okay. if i put one here then i could put a tower on either of these two because there's a route that is completed in between them because this one is only one where do you put the tower the tower would go on the city which is oh, where these relics those are those faces okay right. yes yes I so see. i would take a tower and i would place it here and if i had finished this right yes. with one of my bridges I would... If anybody had, or only if you had? Well, see, that's the thing, is when... It has to have a completed route that goes to the city, yes. and your bridge has to be one of the bridges that is in the completed route. Oh, okay. So in this case, I could place it here, but you couldn't. Right. But if you put a put one here and this bridge was completed, then you could. Right, I understand. Right? So, if, say I'm and placing also, a tower I here... I could come here if I had... If, I, if you put your bridge here and I put my bridge here, then we both have access to this. I think so. it has to be in a completed route your bridge has to be in a completed route. So if you put it here, but this wasn't completed, it wouldn't oh, count as a completed route. I'm sorry, route. I didn't see the rest of it. Yeah, but if yeah. I did, ha if all these were here, then anybody who built these yes. has access to this and you have access to it. Gotcha, yes, exactly. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So um, that's why the one spaces, I mean, the queen's ambition I'm sure is, they go quick. Yeah, they go quickly, but it's also like not as good of a bonus as some of the other things. Right, so right. you have to keep that in mind. Um, in a two-player game, you will where, whenever you build a tower, you will gain the two relics. In in a multiplayer game, oh. there's usually only one relic on okay. each spot. You gain two relics, and you get to pick from the two 
to oh, you decide what which one you want to uh, choose. Won. The other one gets discarded. Gotcha. And you will place it on your little relic board. What? A relic okay, board? Okay, so oh, we you've got a little, little relic case. board here. There's four areas. So you will get the relic, and then you'll place it on here and get whatever it says on the space that you got, right. that, that you placed it. Um, you can, you know, there's some, like, ink removal. There's popularity. There is Queen's Ambition, and then right. there's the navigation track. So anytime you see this navigation, you get to move up on the navigation track, which makes your relics more valuable. Okay. So the further up you get on here, the relics, this one says one you get point. one victory point for every three relics right. that you have. This one, if you get all the way to one the top, for one for one. And that's an end of game. Thing. Right, that's an end of game. All exactly. Right. Okay. So uh, something also to note, I didn't mention this before, but anytime you see a star with a question mark in it, yeah. that means that it is popularity equal to the round that you're in oh. or equal to the year that you're in and we're playing me. through three years yeah we'll play through three years so that becomes more valuable Over later on in the don't game. do it immediately but you know sometimes you just need the one I need the popularity because right? so, i need these people now you, yeah exactly so you have to you have to pay attention to that all right so all right so once we have gone through all six of these right remember right. whoever's first in the queen's ambition track will get to place Which it one more time track again Yes, correct. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, if they're if we're both on the final space, whoever got there first. And so yeah, if I if I get it and I say we're doing more purple, exactly, you could say oh crap, and then pay a resource and do a purple. brown or a green. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so that's still in play. And once you choose, right? So say you chose purple, we'll flip this over. That yep. means it can't be chosen. The, as as the seventh action for the rest of the game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so not only are you doing that, but you're also kind of. Yep. adjusting it. And if my counselor was there, for example, then I would still take the first player token because mm. you are okay. you're okay. activating that action. Okay. okay? Yep, yep. So, once that seventh action has been done, there's also one other thing. So, if you weren't first on the Queen's Favor track, you might be thinking, man, this, this stinks. I, mean, yeah. I don't get to do anything. Well, actually, you do get to do something. Yay. You have the opportunity, you don't have to, but you have the opportunity to swap two of the locations Oh my here. gosh. Okay? So, you can swap Two of the locations. So you say, okay, maybe I'm doing really good on the blue track and you don't have a lot of stuff in the blue track. So I'm going to like bump that up so I can like do that sooner, right? So I'm going to like say I'm going to switch these two, right? And then you can also, you get a chance to place about these. One, the <laughs> one lock token All right. on any of these to say, okay, I like where that is. I don't want anybody else to move that one. That is always going to be the same yes. thing. And so that that is what the person who doesn't win the queen's okay. ambition gets reprogram to do. it and then lock yep. some of it in place exactly okay so one thing that i did want to we we that's that's everything that's on the board that's here. all folks yeah easy right <laughs> there's one thing that we didn't quite talk about which was we we, we chatted about this at the beginning, right the beginning so i just yeah. wanted to I'll, I'll just reveal one of mine just just to so so when when we get here on the queen's ambition track yep. there's a little triangle one. which means that you can yep. place one of your feet tiles okay yep. so you will choose where to put it and say i wanted to put it here right let's say right and now you see that i've completed some circles right yeah you also in your supply you've got these challenge tokens there's a two a three and a four yes right and so you will then place this on there and this will give you end of game scoring points so if i put this little four challenge token here that means that at the end of the game if i have five ink in my supply and i've also placed four council person council people right mm -hmm. counselors then i will get four points oh my gosh but this is also a public objective which yes. means that you also could do that objective and get those, and get four, those points. four points as well so this is turned on for everybody this is for everybody right wow. so that's okay. that's what makes it tricky also on these feet tiles there's automatically a three victory point in the middle. So if you ever complete this one and this one, then you still get three. You get three points. Okay. So that's for everybody as well. Okay. Okay. Wow. So we are putting, we are creating the objectives for scoring the points for everybody. as the game goes on. Okay. Right. And so things definitely change, and your your you know motivation for the actions that you take change. And how do we place these? Uh, there was this one here. Yeah. And that's it's that's it. See this. Oh, that's it. That every time. We are each... Anytime. Yeah. Anytime you cut. You you hit that, then you'll place one. Oh, is this another one that crashes back down? Yeah, that one goes they back all down. Crash yeah. back at the down. end of the yeah. at the end of the and round, the, that one goes back yes. to zero. Oh, okay, exactly. So then you, you climb up, do it again. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. So gotcha. the 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 thing with this one is, as you notice here, I put one here, but I didn't put one there. So this is now moot. This is the one oh, no, score. Yeah, can't that's do not. This one later. Yeah, this that's is... not like a scoring objective. Okay. As you as you go through. If the we game. want to score this, another one placed over here. Right. Exactly. And this could be hit multiple times. Exactly. Making this. Worth multiple eight points or yeah. 12 points. And if you like are going heavy on the guild tokens or you're going heavy on that, like, you know, not okay. a bad not a bad right. thing for you to do, right? Okay. Um, also, they can't ever be placed like this. They have to be 
like this. But okay. they can be rotated 180 degrees if you want to. Right. Right. So, and that's, also yeah. we could not just put one right here, right? Here. Oh, right. Exactly. It has, to, has to connect yeah, to something. Has to connect to something. Yep. Okay. And other than that, wow. we will. You know, the the action itself is simple, right? We talked about uh, uh, all of the things that you can do, mm -hmm. but really, you know, when it comes to your turn, here's what you do, right? You know, do we'll, the main you thing either do the primary do thing or thing. you know, spend a resource to do one of the secondary actions, mm -hmm. and then you'll do any of your free actions, which is. We, we talked about moving the envoy into the action space. Okay. That's a free action. The other actions, the other free action that you can do is use your ink to spend a scroll. All right. So that we previously collected. right now we don't we have two scrolls actually on our board, two scroll spaces right next to that. Do I? Well. Oh, hey, look yeah. at that. Yes, I so do. So those are two basic scrolls, right? One of them is you can refresh the the resource of the round that you're in, of the primary round that All you're right. in. Okay. So which ones are they? Yeah, this one right here, refresh oh, the resource of the round that you're in. So if I had exhausted this one, I could refresh the red resource. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and this one allows me to gain one popularity for every different seal that I have. So I told you that how seals are going to kind of come into play, mm -hmm. right? So the more different types of seals that you have from here or from gaining seals uh, on the board, which, where did we put them? We put them up there, yeah. Um, gaining those seals from the board into your supply, that will increase the, the power the of power that action. Of that so you can, scroll. by the end of the game, you know, if you've got all six types of seals, right, you could get six popularity. These that, were the seals is, good? Uh, no, no, these ones up there. Those are the seals. These were the seals. Yeah, so yes, two yes, of yes. them are already in our supply. I've right. got the gray one. You've got the blue one, right? Okay. But yeah. we can gain seals from these. And also, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. if we, uh, if we've, built a tower and you put an envoy on there, you get to get the seal of that color, right? So if I put a purple envoy here, I get to get the purple seal. And those are one and done. So once I get the purple seal, you can't get the purple seal. Sure, sure. But okay. you can still get purple seals from yeah, these yeah. traditions. Okay? Right, okay. What happens at the end of a round? Yes, yeah, so so we're, we're after still we've done uh, yeah we've six. done we've done the free uh, at the after we've done all seven actions seven right, yeah we will one. reset this we'll reset that and this crashes back down this crashes back mm -hmm. down and all of these will will go well actually that's not they, true these were happening it, yeah it, on these will always crash back down at the as end of as, the action as soon as we do them as soon as you do them but if you've gained reputation and haven't taken an action mm -hmm. those yeah, yeah, yeah. won't crash down just if you did that for some reason exactly yeah. okay so um, and then we'll, we will just uh, we'll restart and 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 go again. There, there's a couple other things though that um, that I wanted to call out for as long as like as far as like turn order goes. Oh wait, there's more. Just yeah, just so uh, we talked about doing the free actions, which is the envoy or the ink, right? And then you choose the guild that you want to go to, yeah. right? And then you will gain your action points, right? And so the action points is how far up your mm -hmm. reputation mm -hmm. marker is. Yep. You'll gain your action points, and this the order of the, operations. How far are you up plus the book? Yes, plus yeah. plus the one from the book. Yeah. But the order of operations on this does matter because when you're gaining action points, you can ref you can exhaust a Ooh. resource of that color uh -huh. to bump up one space on the reputation. So if I was in taking the green action and I only had one action point, I could re I could exhaust that to go up to three action right. points. Right. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So that is why refreshing your or, or yeah, refreshing your resources is important because they allow you to get extra action points on your turn if they're available mm -hmm. to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, once you have gained the AP, right, you'll mark your action points here at the top of your board. So say I had six action points, right? Mm -hmm. Then you mark it there, and then you can spend it on the guild that you have chosen. And only that one. And only Can't that one. Can't split it between multiples. Nope. Yep. Nope. You gotta do it all in one, yep. and then then you get a chance to do free actions again. So potentially you gained. Oh. You gained new envoys, or you gained new ink, or something through your actions. You can so choose the beginning to do that. of your turn and the end of your yeah, turn. Yeah, yep. And then, and then you basically just uh, you know move it. Once you get it down to zero, then you clean up, which means that your your reputation moves back down uh, to whatever your rank is, and that's the end of your turn. Okay. 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 So the actual actions, it's just like do the action points of the guild that you have. So it it's actually not that difficult, but it's the combos that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. make it a little bit complicated. But and actually, wait a minute. We were about to end, folks, but Alex pointed out after the fact that he forgot two things. So, uh, addendum time. What were the additional things we need to tell folks about? Yes. So, we, we had just talked about envoys. Envoys in general. in general, right? Where they go on your board and everything. But Getting there is a special rule to... All of that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. There is a special rule to what happens when we run out of envoys. Yes. So it does not refill at the, at the end of a round like other stuff. Right? Exactly. When you get down to one envoy remaining on the ship then 
you will refill the envoy from the bag back up to six, mm -hmm. and you will bump the popularity marker up by one, which okay. makes them more challenging to get right. to in the future. So right? you're incentivized to get them earlier in the game. Exactly. Um, because it'll get tougher and tougher. Or you're incentivized to set yourself up so that, oh, it's easy for me to be popular exactly. and get more envoys because they are a huge source of bonus actions. 100%. In the same way Ink is. So that was the way envoys work. When you're down to one, you refill back up to six, and then it just gets a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, we talked about building stuff here and about how the different pieces you know have to lay over, but there was one additional opportunity for scoring you forgot to mention that's right yeah so we talked about there's there's lots of different ways to score points in this game but they're in this specific section if you place a you place a tile right and you put a house on it yeah and then say later on i place a tile and i put one of my houses on it let's right. say you will or get go like this one point for each completed row or column that that house occupies. So, for example, my house right here, if we filled out this column or we filled out this row, each one would afford that house one point. Right. So, so a maximum of two points per house on the board. Right. And in this case, I am obviously very highly incentivized to, as quick as I can, build this, take both of these benefits, mm -hmm. and get another house because then we will, I will have finished this and I froze you out. Too late for you to get in here. Yeah. And that's an additional four points, which in this game, is a big deal. Well, it's it's yeah, it's two points, and if you complete the if you complete the rows, I mean, they can extra. be worth even more. Exactly. But this is not a high scoring game, so yeah. you may say two points. Yeah, two points yeah. is is it's not worth nothing. It. It's definitely worth it. So those were both uh, worth mentioning in passing uh, before we sign out. Yes. Well, folks, <laughs> uh, um, I think this is the that was the biggest teach you've had to do so Gotta far. Got to take a breath these. after that. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we're just getting started, folks. Because if you'd like to now, you can go on ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner screen, or follow the links down in the show notes, and you can watch me put everything I've just learned to the test as I do a full preview of the gameplay of the sixth realm. Or instead, if you would just like to hear some final thoughts, that option is available as well. It's your choice, folks. In five, four, three. Two, one.